On this episode of the John 1911 Podcast, Freeze Ain't Got No Gas, People Who Beat On Guns With Hammers Are Retarded, CZP-10 Testing Is Over, Up Next Is The Gen 5 Glock, and the T-91 Build. Special note, this episode ends abruptly because of a technical issue. We'll get back to normal next time. Okay, good morning everybody. This is Mark Ian Freeze, and this is episode 74 of the John 1911 Podcast. How was your night, Freeze? Not too bad. That's good. It's been a little while since we've had a podcast. Maybe it's been over a week? Yeah, I think it has. Yeah, that's, that's unusual for us. There's been a lot going on, so... Yeah, it's been crazy. So, uh, we've had all these people that uh, watch our videos, and we, I keep getting like private messages and emails and comments about your four wheeler, and everyone's like, "Have him check the floater in his uh, carburetor." Well, that's kind of what I figured, but yeah. What's the? <laughs> one, well, I mean, did you have you have you cha- have you messed with that? No, I haven't had a chance to mess with it, but but yeah, that's pretty much what I've uh, decided. That's what I've decided. Uh, being that the petcock was left open, um, I think just jarring down the road, the floats in the carburetor stuck open, and basically <laughs> the floats are what regulate the fuel into the carburetor. So if they're stuck open, basically the bowl of the carburetor just fills up from the gas tank. And then with the engine not running and nowhere to go, it just runs out the overflow. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much what I think happened. But I mean, like I said before, I have a new carburetor to put on it. So I just have to actually sit down and do it. Yeah. You know, uh, for those that don't watch the videos, because here's the thing, you know, uh, how do I say this? I don't. I don't know what the, I have to think about. What the multiple is? The amount of people that listen to the podcast versus watch our videos. I mean, it's this is no joke. It's probably fifteen to one people in favor of the podcast. We have a lot of people listening. It's not that we're talking about. We yeah. are working on the thousand yard range project, and so we had to take a little road trip. Freeze bought us, brought us four wheeler, filled it up the night before, had the trailer ready. I just came went over his house, backed up, picked up the trailer, and we headed out to the range. And we get there, <laughs> and you go to start your damn four wheeler, and it's got no gas in it. Yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't start. <clears throat> and um, the gas tank was, well, it wasn't empty. There, there's a reserve on it, but, you know. I can't be driving around this property on reserve, you know, because, you know, if, if I run the reserve dry, uh, you know, then we're pushing. <laughs> yeah, well, because we don't have a road to get to the back end of the property yet. So because this was a this this was a trip to determine whether or not we need a bulldozer. And so it was <laughs> like, ah, oh, shit, we can't. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't. It was kind of wet. I couldn't guarantee you I'd get my truck back out from out of there. So. You know, anyway, yeah, it was a uh, kind of a so we had to, you know, if you if if people that see the video, see a couple guys <laughs> just got out of like uh, an air conditioned pickup truck and we're all you know we we look like we're calm and you know rested and then about ten seconds later there's a cut and it looks like we just got blown <laughs> you know blown out of a swimming pool. <laughs> oh man, I I mean I was so I was sweating my butt off. I was I was so my 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 shirt looks like a limp dish rag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was ninety some degrees and we'd uh you know hump oh, it down. Shit. And yeah, you know, look, I mean you know being look like, we're just you know being real here. I mean dude you've you've got you know some bad knees and, and you know, I mean it was it was a hump. Yeah, yeah. I mean my uh you know it was hot, it was humid and you know I don't care how you cut it, you know, you're gonna sweat. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It was just it was just a hot, humid day, and you know, and we humped the property, you know, and uh, and it was it was a good it was a good trip down there. I mean, we needed to do it. It was it was worthwhile. It was beneficial. We uh, got a lot out of it. We did. Um, you know, we don't have everything quite finalized yet with the with the range. There's actually been some been some blips um, with the. Uh, 
you know, some stuff that I haven't told you yet. Apparently, you know, they're, they, not, not them, the, we're just on the back end. Some people want more money. And so it's like, whatever. So, I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's, every, every, everyone always wants, wants more money. Yeah. Everybody always, you know, it's just, you know, it's just part of the, you know, look, I mean, you know, my job is to eat shit and I just eat this kind of bullshit every day. It just kind of goes with the territory. So, you know, we'll, we'll get it all figured out. I mean, look, if I think I'm having a bad day, at least I'm not, I'm, at least I'm, I'm not selling SIG P320s. Yeah, no shit. Well, you know, I mean, and, it, and it's good that you handle this because, uh, I mean, you know me, uh, when, when they come after you for more money, it's, uh, my immediate reaction is, fuck it, we're done. We're walking away, you know. Yeah. Where yeah. the, where this, this, the smart move is to go, well, we don't know if there's any more money on the table, but let's talk about it. And that's where you come in because I'm just like, no, screw it. No, we're done. See, <laughs> you know? I've learned, I've learned over the years that you and I, we bring different experiences and skills to the table and where, you know, look, I can, Look, I know. Uh, look, I know my way around a freaking, you know, boardroom. I, I I know the way to the courthouse. I know, you know. I mean, the, the I look. I I know how all and, this shit works. But then, and, and I know how to choke out a thug. I mean, you know, but <laughs> I, you know. If, well, I remember. Well, but well, hold on. I remember we were. I'm not going to get into this. We were. I because I don't want to identify who they are, and I'm going to say this: it wasn't Magpul. <laughs> so, so people know this. At one point in the past, we were discussing selling magazines on our tactical T-shirts page, and we were in communication with a company that sold magazines wholesale. And long story, very very short. My position is they are fucking liars. They lied to me, and. I, I blew the whole goddamn deal up. And you were like, this is just kind of how this works, dude. This is part of the wholesale retail dance. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not used to wholesale retail. These people, yeah. they lied to me. And, you know, and as you know, in, in my world, you lie, you die. And it's just like, I, I went, I, again, we're not going to get into it too much, but I'm sure as you recall, I went completely batshit on these people. Yeah, I know, and I'm sitting there and just like, dude, you're overreacting. Chill. I was telling this woman, <laughs> "Fuck you, fuck <laughs> off, suck my dick." I mean, I was letting this woman have it, you know. And, she, and, and I'm sure she was going like, "Oh my god, I hate dealing with noobs," <laughs> you know. And it's like, you know what? But the, what that told me was, and again, you're right because you kind of explained it to me later. You know, you're like, "Look, this is kind of how the." wholesale retail this all this whole universe and i'm not you know i'm whatever but you know it, it it really basically told me i don't want to be in i don't want to be in this business i don't want to be a, i don't want to do business like this i don't want to have these kinds of relationships i don't want to have these kinds of conversations um you know it was just like nope uh-uh because uh, as far as i'm concerned they lied to me in writing, they lied to me, and it was like, "Whoa, no, 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 no." So, you know, well, I, we, we both, you know, different. We my my point is, you know, I can, you know, I'm good at some areas. You're good at some other areas. We figure it out. Yeah, we get it done at the end of the day. Hey, but look, here's the thing. Um, my mantra, and it's been my mantra for years, and you've heard me say it, you know, a, a, probably a thousand times. Don't make it hard. For me to give you money. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. And I mean, seriously, don't make it hard. If I'm going to actually reach into my pocket and pull out a big old greasy pile of uh, greenbacks, and those that have followed us for a while know that I'm pretty much a cheap bastard and I don't spend money, uh, you know, unless I absolutely have to. If I'm going to hand you a pocket full of money, don't make it hard. You know, don't move your hand around. Hold it nice and steady so I can place it in your hand. You know, if you start, if you know, if you start making it hard, you know, there's a thousand people out there that'll take my money. Yeah. You know, I mean, I just, it's, it's the way I am. Just, I don't, don't make things hard. Don't make it hard for me to give you money. 
Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, yeah, I'll, we'll get through this. I'll handle it. I kind of I expected there was going to be something, you know. Uh, it, it's just weird because I guess, it, it uh, you know, as obliquely as I'm talking about it, it, people would think we're talking about the same thing. But, you know, to me, that whole wholesale retail relationship and the way they do business, I think it's I think it's. I think it's criminal. I was like these people. I was. Oh, I, it, it it is. And it, mean, it wasn't Magpul. I'll I'll because I'll, I don't want people to be like, oh fuck it. I'm not. You no, know, it wasn't Magpul. So you know, there's a lot uh, of other. You know, I mean, look. I mean, at the end of the day, they. You know, I, you know, on that particular situation, you totally overreacted. But in all fairness. They were trying to pull some bullshit that they shouldn't have been trying to pull. And it was like, well, you know what? It's 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 walk away time, you know? Yeah. You know, I guess it was the universe just trying to tell me I don't I don't want to go in that kind of business. I don't want to deal with that. I was like, whatever. We're just going to go, you know, go down the path that we're going down. And it was just whatever. I kind of was over it. So let's let's change subjects here. So I don't know if you've heard this. Um, So. You know, obviously the Sig P320 is apparently, I don't know, like, I, I mean, re- if you read the internet, you would think a Sig P320 broke in half and a, and a nuclear mushroom cloud popped out of the middle one somewhere and, you know, and polluted yeah. half the planet. Well, I guess now the new, th- this is awesome. So these guys on the internet, you know, people are taking SIGs and dropping them. And then other people are like, well, hey, I want to – I'm going to start dropping my SIGs too. So then other people on the internet are like, hey, I need a new shtick here because this is – you know, in the past 12 hours, this has gotten to be old habit. So now they're taking hammers. <laughs> they're, they're beating on these on these SIGs, setting them off. And then now everybody on the internet is taking hammers and beating on their SIGs. And I guarantee, I promise everybody that, you know, we're kind of getting into the video stuff. We will never, ever take a hammer and beat it, you know, and Look, beat on a gun with it. And this is this is what I suggest. If you're watching a a, a gun channel and they are beating on their gun with a hammer to to you know to get it to go off i suggest you stop watching the video delete that channel from your watch list and never ever watch or read anything that these people put out again because they're jackasses look here's the thing i told i told a, i commented uh I guess on the Facebook page, I don't even remember, but, um, some guy rolled in and, um, called, you know, the VP nine junk and then immediately followed it up with that horrendous freaking torture test video where they're grinding it into gravel and in a creek bed and all that crap. And, You know, I told the guy, uh, of course, he never replied to my comment. He quickly ran away, bravely ran away, as Monty Python would say. Um, Yeah, I told the guy, I said, yeah, okay, the VP9 has its flaws. So do Glocks. So does everything else. I can make any gun fail. Trust me. Trust me. You give me enough tools and enough vices in an area, (laughs) I'll make any gun discharge. I'll make a Glock discharge. You give me, you give me the willpower and the way, and you don't mind me totally wrecking your firearm. I'll get it to go off. I guarantee it. I'll put money on it. Any uh, any gun you can torture to death, okay? And I told him. I said, look, wh- I said, you know, the VP9 does have its flaws. I, no one's saying it doesn't. But here's the thing: when's the last time I carry daily? You carry daily. Have for years. When's the last time you've ever put yourself in a situation where your VP9 would meet the criteria of that torture test to fail? Uh, how about never? Well, look, there's a, there's, you know, there's a couple, there's a couple things to that that I, uh, technically that I guess we need to. I, 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 this is more maybe my opinion, just because I've seen it. I would look 
anytime there's a fail, look, you want to take stuff to failure. I, look, drop your guns, beat your guns, dip them in the dirt. Nobody cares. I mean, everybody cares. Nobody cares. It's fine. Figure out what works, what doesn't. I mean, sure. I mean, I, I you know. I at least take that information and go, well, guess I, I won't be going to a Tough mutter with my VP9. However, from a technical standpoint, I have been around a lot of Glock pistols. Yeah. And anybody that's, that's been around a lot of sh- firing Glock pistols, I mean, I mean a lot of them. I don't mean just like, oh, I, I put a lot of rounds for my Glock. If you're around a lot of people shooting a lot of rounds in multiple Glocks, you will eventually run into something that is pretty well known among the high round count people a glock will fire out of battery um look but but the thing is the vp not i would i would imagine the hk guns they could probably use a, a a heavier you know recoil spring but their their disconnect seems to be pretty like right now like i've messed with mine and i'll tell you what if you just even take that thing just a hair out of battery or out of, you know, I guess if you wanted, if you, if your definition of in battery is all the way forward, if you take that gun just a little, I mean, the the tolerances between the Glock and the VP9 going out of battery and and battery disc out of battery disconnect, they're different, and that's some of what you're seeing. Yeah, but look, um, I don't want to get tied up in all that, but what what I was saying is. Okay, you take a P320 and drop it from, uh, I don't know, chest high and drop it on the back of its slide or whatever. If it goes off, that's a problem. It's a huge but if problem. You ch- yeah, and I'm not saying it's not, okay? But you take your 320 and you drop it from chest height three or four times and you can't get it to go off, so you put it in a freaking vice and start beating on it with a hammer, that is not realistic. That's not real world. That I mean, you know, if it takes you beating on it with a hammer to get it to go off, dude, as far as I'm concerned, I'll carry that gun all day long, Oh, it gets 24-7. E- it gets because- even better. It gets even better. So, again, you know, this is, again, you have to realize – our listeners at home and look I try not to engage in this too much because I don't want to get into entertainment you know we're kind of doing what we're doing over here and we're choosing to bring you along you know I this is my favorite the guys that were drop were basically the guys inducing failures with the 320 are now criticizing the guys who are who are whacking them with hammers and it's like you realize everybody you're all guilty of the same thing you're just trying you know don't don't post this shit on the internet and then act all surprised when people think you're kind of trolling and just trying to drive traffic it's like oh that they're just that's just that's just horse shit just trying to drive traffic it's like well, well they're, they're well, all jo- trying to drive yeah, traffic yeah, you motherfuckers because, you're all doing it because look i don't care i don't care if it's the guys torture testing 320s or it's it's well known, and I won't mention any names, whether it's just well known legitimate gun channels. Everyone who has a video channel is trying to drive traffic. Now you can do it in a way that is, you know, is you know, educational, it's interesting, uh, people can learn from it, people can enjoy it. Or you can go into the freaking douchebag mode and like torture test uh, let's take a high point and throw it a, a, up against trees and across driveways and see if we can get it to break and, dude that's just that's that's cheap entertainment it is cheap entertainment now check this out <laughs> I, again because i actually like a lot of people don't realize this um i, I don't have facebook <laughs> i mean i really this is no joke the only presence i have on facebook is our business page i literally don't have a facebook page I've never had a personal Facebook page. And so I don't I, – I, I just don't do it. And so what's happened now is, you know, you've got everyone's – look, I mean, it's like entertainment, television, numbers. Look, at, they're all businesses trying to drive traffic. And, look, there's something – I mean, look, I, I, look, we don't get any video traffic. I mean, compared to – we, you know, so, I mean, that's fine. But it's just being honest, we don't compete. But now what these guys are doing is – they're taking hammers and all these different guns, and they're now beating on them with hammers. 
And guess See, what they've discovered? That, and guess what they've discovered? They you found beat that, enough guns with hammers, a lot of them will go off. They have found. Well, here's the thing. I, people, I don't know. I, I tell you what, 1911s, especially how the sear nose and the hammer, and it's like, I, I bet, I bet a fair number of 1911s. If you beat on them with a hammer, would drop to the half cock. Um, especially with those really, you know, because that's kind of why they need to have a half cock. But so anyway, apparently they have discovered. That one of the canic pistols, if you beat on it with a hammer, will, will drop its will drop its striker. So now Canic has been forced to issue a recall, or I guess it's Century, because in the U.S. it's Century that imports them. And you know, it's like, oh, here. So now every she, gun, she, all these people beating on these guns with hammers. You know, you just you realize this is collective madness, right? <laughs> I mean, it, it this is just ridiculous. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the Canic. The Canic's a fine freaking gun. Um, but you know, again, uh, you know, if I start breaking out the five pound sledge and start wailing away on 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 guns, uh, you'd be amazed how many of them I can get to go off. You know, I mean, that may not do a whole lot of good to the gun by the time I'm done wailing away on it. But I mean, that's not realistic, though. I mean, it's not a realistic situation. Do you think you know? a lot of this is because you've got guys today that their entire that their entire gun history has been, say, post Glock dominance? So, I mean, look, guys that are 1911 guys. When you hear the argument between like a Series 70 and the Series 80 1911, oh and yeah. so the arguments on people, if you're reading the arguments like, well, you know, the Series 80, it's more difficult, you, you know, you need three hands to freaking take the whole thing apart or the Schwartz grip safety with the, the Kimber uses. And, you know, oh, I like to, you know, it's easy to you know, be better triggers on the Series 70. You realize what you're actually talking about is a firing pin block because if you have a Colt 1911 and it is not a Series 80 or it doesn't have a Schwartz safety, which is the grip safety <clears throat> firing pin block design, in theory, if you drop that gun basically muzzle down, the, nothing stopping that firing pin from overriding the firing pin spring and hitting the strike or hitting a, hitting a, the primer. Yeah. yeah. So all these people that if you're carrying these Les Bear, Ed Brown, Wilson Combat, all of these high-end 1911s, if you beat on these guns hard enough, you, nope. could, you could get a discharge. Absolutely. But then Absolutely. that's also why back in the day when you were like, oh, we always changed our springs at 3,000 rounds. Look, you could go longer than 3,000 rounds. Or, But what you would always do, at least I would do, because I carry my 12 years I carried a 1911 was a Series 70 gun. I always changed the recoil spring, and then I took the freaking firing pin out of it and changed the firing pin spring. Call Wolf. By well, the recoil I mean, look, spring with the firing pin spring, it's a package. It comes with yeah, both. Yeah, that, that's the thing. You you can buy the recoil spring separately, mm -hmm. or you can buy the the, the pa a spring kit. Yeah, you know, and you don't, and, and, and well, not the spring just kit, replace, but the one with the firing pin spring. And here's the thing: you don't need to replace a firing pin spring every three thousand, nine thousand, twelve thousand rounds. But here's the no. thing: if you always replace it when you replace the recoil spring, you should have a spring that's heavy enough. That uh, it, it'll hold that firing pin back, and it's also why you started seeing, was it titanium firing pins mm -hmm. in yeah. 1911s for the same reason because titanium has less mass weight for the home gamer, so it's not as much force to override that spring. This is all old. And this is this is this is not only is this old ground for the 1911 guys. This is hundred year old ground. Yeah, this is stuff that's been put to bed a long time ago. <laughs> you know, it, I mean, look, this whole thing is stupid. And the the guys that are doing this, I mean, they're just, they're ridiculous. I mean, they're totally, totally ridiculous. I mean, they are. 
Um, and uh, like I said, I suggest if, uh, if, if you like any of the channels that have these guys doing this, you should, I suggest you unlike them and just drop them like a rock because honestly, any content that they put out is, is, is cheap bullshit. Look, I'm not going to be that. Look, that critical about it. Look, all of the information is data, and it's good. Like, do I look? I carry a VP9. Do, I mean, is is the fact that you know that maybe my gun might not go as long in some of these tests as other guns? That's interesting data. But what I would step back and I would say is, are the people that you're getting your information from? And you look at to, the totality of what they engage in, whatever that is. Is are they spending more time beating on guns or are they shooting guns? And you know, I would. Th- this is more reflection of my personal interests. I am more interested in shooting guns and the personal journey and trying to get as good as I can be. Look, I'll never be Jerry Michalik, but I want to be as the best Marky I can be. And, you know, I think a lot of these channels and I think a lot of people that watch this stuff, it's just like these gun forums. you got all these guys that get on these gun forums. They're on there for hours. Yeah. And they're all they're doing is punching on a keyboard. They're not actually shooting much, if at all. And they're, quote, gun guys. And it's like, at what point do you have to look yourself in the mirror and go, I don't actually shoot and I'm not a good shot and I, I don't. I'm not. Am I really a gun guy? You know, I, you know. Well, these, look, don't look, spend all you your can, time watch, reading these forms. Don't spend all your time watching these YouTube channels. Look, you can um, you can be the guy on the 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 AK forum. Pick one um, who has you know ten thousand posts on the forum. Knows everything about an AK. You know, inside and out can disassemble it blindfolded in 2.3 seconds and reassemble it and knows all the accessories and knows the patent numbers for everything and knows the the guy who ran the uh, milling machine for Kalishnikov in 1954. Fuck this I mean, you can, <laughs> Yeah, you, you can know all that stuff. But honestly, if you shoot a thousand rounds through that gun a year... Dude, screw you. You're not a, you're not an expert. I mean, you know, yeah, you know a lot about the gun. You know the history of it, but big deal. Yeah. I suspect big. we're probably losing a lot of listeners, but I'm not going to I'm not going to back I, off I, of it. You know what? I don't care. Uh, I mean, look, I mean, if if what I say on a podcast hurts your feelings, then this is not the place for you. Yeah. Well, okay. Like, look. In another life, I I worked for a while at a at a at a facility, and we had <laughs> this is this is this was interesting. I mean, again, I you know because you know I'm you know I have to always I always have to shoot to a standard. I have to have a certain level of accomplishment, competency, the ability to you know convey an idea and you know shoot, instruct, demo, and so. Uh, we had a, a, a handful of these, I would call them famous gun writers. Yeah. And they came through the, they came through the, they came through and it was like, you know, I mean, I expected, you know, Night Elf, Mohawk, Ninja, you know, whatever guy. And I will never forget this dude. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say his name and you don't know his name, so I'm not going to say it. And we don't. I mean, we you don't we don't associate with him. So I mean, it's not like someone that's over here. <laughs> this guy was a nationally known gun media personality that people would listen to, yeah. and literally, he you know under stress to fire a handgun, pulls his handgun out of the holster, and is on his way up to the target is putting rounds into the dirt. Boom. Boom, boom, and then up into the freaking target backers, and boom, and then I mean, like literally four rounds, boom, 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 up, and then finally hit one in the target, and it was, I mean, it was, sh- it was shocking as hell. I was like, uh-huh. oh my god! And so here's the thing: I occasionally, 
if I do a and a we'll get someone, hey, what's the, what's the one thing I can do? What's the one, you know, skill or thing I should master? And again, we always get this. It's harder to shoot a handgun than it is to shoot a rifle. And everybody wants to do like, you know, drop, switch hand, drop out this, run and jump, you know, Starsky and Hutch sliding across the hood of the car. I said the single most important skill you can learn as a home gamer with a handgun is the ability under stress to reach down, grab, get a master purchase on that gun, unholster it, press out for one committed shot, and not shoot yourself the dirt or miss. And that is the because people there are people that are like I'm a gun guy, but what they do is they go to the range, they take their gun, they load it, then they hold it out in front of them, and then they quote start shooting for real. You mm-hmm. people would be shocked at how many of these guys on these on these gun forms and on the internet cannot they cannot draw a handgun out of a holster and press out for a committed shot and not fuck it up under stress. Yeah. And it's not yeah. glamorous. It's not tactical. It's not SEAL Team 47. Yeah. But I uh, will no. never forget this guy. Boom. Well, boom. And it was just like, holy fuck. Yeah, but that, but that's typical. I, I mean, you know. Unfortunately, it is. You know. Um, <sighs> look, and it's not See, like, they're, look, they're, it's not they're, like they're, we're look, the best at everything either. Like, we're perfect. Okay. So... If this same story about this unnamed person who I don't know, if you wrote an article and put it up on our Facebook page, we'd have a hundred different people come in and talk about, well, you know, I do this and I do that and I do this. And and what they're doing is exactly what you're talking about. They're telling us how awesome they are and how they train and how they do this, but the truth is 99% of them are lying. Everybody says that I'm too smart for that to happen to me. I'm too good. Yeah. That'll never happen oh, to me. Oh, there's, there's no such thing as an accidental discharge. They're all negligent. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you want to get into that semantic argument, whatever. Yes, there is an accidental. It, oh, are dude, are I, all ADs negligent? Yes, they are. Because you accidentally torched off around, that is negligent. However, there is such thing as an AD. I mean, any, I know, God, I know probably eight or ten people that have had ADs, including myself, to be honest. I mean, you look, look, I have a great story on that, and I have to. I have to be oblique with this as well because I don't want to get anybody. I don't want to. I don't want to get anybody associated, you know, with this podcast that doesn't want to be associated with this podcast. Yes. I was having a conversation with a very high-ranking member of the 75th Ranger Regiment more than a couple years ago. We were we were discussing. He was talking about one of the. Uh, I think it. Um, I can't remember even which one of these one of these weapons programs they had uh, submitted a, a rifle to the regiment for testing and evaluation, and um, he this is I mean the uh, a very not a flag officer and not a lieutenant so well you know I mean <laughs> field okay. you know definitely field uh, uh, you know well in the field grade we'll just leave it that way so because yes. I don't want to. Because you can really narrow yeah. it down. So, yeah. and he was making a point. He was like, "I like you know guns with like bolt releases and uh, safeties inside the trigger guard." And you know, his argument was, he was like, I, "You know," he says, "Look, I understand it's faster, and I understand this, and I understand that." He said, "But you got to realize, you got some guy. He's been awake for th- for for three days straight on no sleep." And he has to admin and unload a weapon, and he's getting into a helicopter around a bunch of other people. And he said, you know, he's like, shit happens. He's like, let's not make this any harder than it has to be. All these guys are running around talking about how, you know, how perfect they are. He said, try try admitting a, a, a rifle for simple, for simple, you know, for a simple task, and you've had no sleep for three days. You on three yeah. days of calm, you know, uh, you know, you've had three, four hours of sleep for over the past, you know, 
thirty some hours. He's like, yeah. He said mm-hmm. it's it's a recipe for disaster. He says we see it all the time. He said yeah, that's why we don't that's why we don't like this stuff by the trigger. He's like all these guys. You can do. He's like he said, and then he was making a point. He said, what I hate about these weapons programs. He says you'll get the guy. He said, he goes look. He goes, a lot of the people that end up running these programs, they're there because they're not good field officers. He (laughs) said, so you get these fucking guys, and they're you know in these admin goddamn jobs. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They have no real experience, and they're making decisions, you know, uh, way out of way out of their lane. And he says, it's it's we hate it. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I totally understand what he's saying, and he's correct, mm-hmm. you know. You get um, all these guys, every goddamn guy on these gun forms would tell this guy he is wrong. Well, sure they would, because everyone on the gun forums, you know, is a... Or YouTube. A, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, they're all three gun experts who, you know, who, you know you know, go to bed, get a little from their old lady, have a good night's sleep, get up, have sausage and eggs for breakfast, and they're feeling refreshed, and then they go to the range, and they set up their gear, and they run an awesome three-match. Yeah, you know what, dude? Most, most, uh, You know what? I got to be honest with you. I Most of the guys that I've ever met off the Internet, no, nah, man, they're not, they're not three-gunners. Okay, I mean, well, unless, hey, unless you hey, go to, okay, like, but, Three Gun but, Nation but, gun forum, okay, nah, okay, dude, but, they're all guys that sit on their fucking ass on the fucking computer all day. Okay, but my my point is, <laughs> you know, they're they're talking about, well, you know, if we put this control here and we do this and we do this, we can, you, we can execute it faster. But, the, you know, but they're not really... You know, in a in a practical you know combat situation, you know, I mean, what what's good on the uh, competitive uh, circuit isn't necessarily the best thing for the military circuit. Uh, just you know, I will never. I'm just just the argument the one guy was making. He's like, all this shit that you want to do, do it on th- or three days of no sleep. Yeah, and then we'll talk. Because, you know, nobody, you know, it's like, again, you know, it's like this whole idea. It's like in the military, nobody ever falls asleep on watch. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. That never fucking happens. Oh, that never happens. Oh, no. 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 Oh, no. you know what? There's oh, no, you, there is, there is watch, no falling. way a Japanese freighter can smash into a modern Aegis missile ship. No way. No way. It's happened twice. In the past fucking month. I mean, the uh, fuck. You see what I'm lot, saying? A lot, a lot of careers have been uh, been trashed. Oh, dude, uh, I think they uh, they've. Uh, I think it was a rear four star admiral. They uh, they shit can one guy. So anyway, you know what? Well, um, we're gonna, but you know, just yeah. There's yeah. no there's no way with an Aegis missile system and the radars and technology, dude. Really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, I know, and and you know, and and that's the thing. Everyone, everyone gets, everyone gets to talking on the internet, and the guy who has the most posts is the automatic expert that everyone defaults to. You know, which is because, typically the guy that's not spending any time actually doing what they're talking about. Exactly, exactly. Because if you have enough time to be on, uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know, Big Bob's gun forum, and you've got ten thousand posts. Well, I got news for you: the guy that's got four posts, but he shoots eight thousand rounds a year, is more of an expert than you. Ah, uh, yeah. See, that's you know, that's why we always, I always make the argument. It's like if you need, look, gun forums are good, YouTube channels are good. If you need a specific piece of oh, data, man. go look, in, get what look. you need to back out. But man, don't get stuck in there. Um, I, 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 want, gun, I do want. I, I do want to get off this all the time to look to look at information, I, but I don't. Dude, I don't hang out there, dude. The only time I ever go to a gun forum, straight up, ninety nine percent of the time I'm looking at the for sale section for shit that's for sale. Um, then the used because you know again, oh, I shoot all the time. It's uh, you know, oh, 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 fuck me, dude, dude. 
I never even thought about this. And then we got to get off this. The okay. goddamn gun forum guys, every fucking last one of them, they all shoot 100,000 rounds a year, but then when their shit's for sale on the gun forum, hardly shot, brown, but like <laughs> new. El, like yeah. at, like new in box. Nobody ever puts a goddamn gun. I got 10,000 <laughs> rounds. Oh, it, dude, I seriously, there it is right there. Bullshit. Yeah. I, the, it's just they're bull, they're just yeah. bullshit fucking places. So anyway, yeah. let's we got to get off this. Okay. Today, I got to get. <clears throat> you're not going to get a chance to shoot the CZP 10C because I got to get that. I was I wanted you to I wanted you to to see that gun because you know uh, I got it from uh, yeah. Officer M, but um I got to get that back to him. That's fine. I mean, I I'm just so tied up. I don't I don't have time. Yeah, because you know to... we're dealing with the range and stuff. But here's the good news. I got I got to clean it real quick too because I haven't cleaned it. Um, uh, give it back to him, dirty. Uh, you know he uh, he literally was like he was like oh yeah man I don't care scratch my gun you know because he, he's a lot like me but again you know, again it's a new gun and part of me's like oh yeah on video because I know he sees our videos I thought about maybe taking that thing and like you know working it like one handed on like a pool t- on a on a on pool table on a on a picnic table or on a post uh-huh. you know beat on it you know I was like no nah, I'm not gonna do that to the guy yeah uh, that'll be the that'll be the last gun he ever lends us <laughs> well. <laughs> Apparently today he wants to give me uh, one of the Gen Five Glocks to try. Oh out. wow! Yeah, so wow. again, Ooh. you know, Ooh. New, Ooh. man, yeah. that just made me so excited. Yeah, you know, did did did, did your did it twitch? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, meet yeah. the new Glock, that, same as the old yeah, Glock. Yeah, you mean the Gen Fail Glock? I mean Five Glock. <laughs> Dude, I've what a, what a, what a, what a piece of trash that is! But okay, I, I don't want to get on Glock ragging because I can spend does not, hours. Freeze does not that. like Glocks, and that's fine. But here's the oh, thing: oh, we got a forty year old platform. We're going to make it my. Oh no, we're not. Well, here, here's well, now. Wait a minute. I, so the Gen, okay? Uh, there's 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 miter. I guess there's doesn't have finger grooves, and they've changed the pins. Did, weren't you telling me about a guy that you know? He's a big Glock guy, and you know yes. I'm going to say the company name because I don't give a fuck. He keeps buying these these Zev trigger kits, but I guess <laughs> he shoots a fair amount. and He keeps breaking them. Yeah, he's he's he's. Uh, he, I'm not going to go into details, but but one of his things is he is a uh, RO at a uh, at a range, and he's a he's a long distance guy. He shoots you know rifles at you know 800 a thousand yards, and mm-hmm. and he does handgun stuff, and but. He, he, he was, we were talking and he's just like, do you have any, do you know any re- reason why I'd be, uh, you know, eating up these pins in these, uh, Zed trigger kits? And I'm like, uh, well, I said, you know, it's like when you go out and buy a Corvette, the exhaust system on that Corvette is engineered for that engine. <laughs> and I said, if you take it to Midas and, and have an aftermarket, exhaust system put on it's probably not going to run as good i mean i I look and i don't want to get into start you know a a pissing match on you know is zev good or great or shit or whatever because i don't really care but 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 my point is the trigger that was engineered in the glock is is what the gun was engineered for you know I mean, I, I told him, I said, I don't know, get a, have a machinist make you a titanium pin to replace the one that you keep having to buy because it eats it. I, I mean, I don't know what the, or maybe just go back to the stock trigger, but he likes to adjust his trigger and play with it and have a light trigger and all that crap. And, and that's fine. But, yeah, it, but it's like, but it's, if, if you've got something that is constantly breaking, at what point do you sit there and say, well, this is crap. Let me put something in here that's not going to break. I mean, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. and you know, look, I... and, and, and this has nothing to do with Glock per se. It could have been any brand, but he or, or any any care. trigger maker could have been yes. Zev, could have been yeah. Ghost, could have been but, Apex. Exactly, but in this particular example, he's running Glocks with Zev triggers. Yeah, so. You know, and I, and again, you know, it could be any manufacturer and any trigger kit, but, but he's having an issue in his gun with this particular trigger kit eating these pins. And it's like, well, you know, my suggestion would be to, um, dump the trigger kit. 
Uh, yeah. Regardless of how well you like it, it's not working for you because you're replacing pins all the time. The best trigger job I can recommend people get for these guns, it's a $600 trigger job. You six for $700, depending, well, depending on the caliber, um, is go out, buy three cases of, of 1,000 round count ammo and shoot 3,000 rounds through your gun and dry fire it. And, and work that thing and wear it in. Look, if you don't want to do that and you want to get in there and polish your stuff, go ahead and do that. I mean, you know, look, I, look, there's obviously a lot of people that do a lot of good stuff with these, with these Glocks in particular. But the one thing with the Glock compared to the, like the VP9, and again, part of the reason why the Glock is a little bit more reliable, if you reliable, but making air quotes in my fingers here, is because it's partly a double action gun. And so the only way, I mean, you're getting in there and, you know, you're, you, for you to get past the double action firing pin block system in a Glock, I mean, you're really making some big changes there. And it's like, just, I mean, just roll through the trigger. I mean, it, I, I can shoot Gen 4 Glocks. But the, I shoot factory Glock triggers. I mean, I can shoot really tight groups with them. Yeah. And well, look, look. I mean, you know, the, the thing is, I mean, I can't shoot a two inch I, I group hate, at fifty I, yards, but that's because I'm a human. I, I hate to, I hate to actually say anything positive about Glocks. It just hurts my soul to do that. But look, the, the truth is, the factory triggers on Glocks are, are they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Now, are they the best? Tur- I mean, you know, well, maybe it's a little grittier. I like it a little lighter, or I like this, or it could be crisper. But you know what? All that can be addressed. Like you said, run some rounds through it, dry fire the damn thing. You know what? Pull it apart and maybe uh, tinker with it. Clean the trigger up. But the truth is, <clears throat> you don't have to spend, you know, a boatload of money on an aftermarket trigger to have a good trigger in your gun. You can make that trigger work for you. Now, you know, like you said, it may be a six, seven hundred dollar uh trigger job by buying, you know, uh, you know, thousands of rounds of ammo, but hey, that's the best money spent on a trigger job ever. Because you're improving your trigger and you're getting round counts. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean I, yeah, look, I can spend $500 and have a gunsmith drop this trigger in for me, and then I can go out there and play with it. Or, you know, I can spend $500 on ammo and go out there and run $500 worth of freaking ammo downrange. What, that's as good as it gets. You know, it's just, look, I, uh, uh, I kind of know a guy, he, he just, he, uh, he had paid somebody to do a trigger job on his, uh, on his Glock 20. It's a 10 millimeter gun, and uh-huh. it's one of these home jobs, like like get in there and like do some crazy shit, not like polished up, but do some crazy stuff. And yeah. over time, this tr- this trigger is supposedly been getting heavier and heavier and heavier. So he finally broke down, and I guess he had um he's ordered a trigger kit from Ghost and dropped it. This is like last week. He's texting me, and I guess he's got it down the five pounds or maybe four and a half and here's the thing because it was it was i think this thing was seven and had worked its way up to seven and a half and was headed to eight and um you know it's just like how do you know it's like i i don't i'm not look i know that look if we were if we were john 1911 trigger trigger com, we'd be selling triggers but i just i'm not personally a big fan of I've never bought an aftermarket trigger for a gun, I don't believe, as I can recall. Definitely not for a handgun. And it's just, I don't know, like, these striker guns, they break so clean, even if they're five pounds. I mean, if you want to be, if you want to shoot better a striker gun, you you want to spend a couple hundred dollars, you know, and upgrade your trigger, I, again, this, the cool kids don't want to, I mean, because they don't want to take, they want to take your money. Spend two three hundred dollars. Go buy yourself a Smith and Wesson Model Ten. Bob the hammer and shoot that thing double action all day. And you will literally pick up a Glock and be like, "Holy shit!" I mean, you will just <laughs> seriously. It, 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 this is not. This is not like, oh yeah, Marky's got some super secret shit here. This is known. If you want to be a better trigger puller for these single action guns, go fire double action triggers. 
Yeah, go go grab an old wheel gun. And, uh, Sh- and, and, you know, and don't cock them. Shoot them double no, no, action. You, no, cocking them doesn't do you any good. Yeah. Shoot that thing double action. Mm-hmm. Shoot yeah. a double action, like you know the guys that buy the the two twenty, the buy, buy the sigs, but they cock that first shot. It's like seriously. I mean, it, it's it, yeah. well. I mean, you know, go out and grab yourself, you know, a wheel gun of you know a Colt, a Smith, whatever, and shoot. Uh, you know, do your hole in hole drill with a with a wheel gun double action. Uh, that'll that'll. That'll give you a reality check real quick. Even just dry firing it. I mean, it makes a huge difference. I will cage because I'll pick up, you know, I'll pick up, uh, cause I've got a, what is it, the 547? I mean, I've, I've got, well, 625s, 547, you know, roll through these double action guns. I just roll through them and I can shoot, I can shoot, shoot them really well. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you probably never heard. So remember how I told you, remember, this is off, obviously, because this is before we had a podcast. Remember how I told you years ago that I was convinced the 1911 market was going to collapse financially? Uh, yeah, I think I remember you saying something about that. I just, you know. Because they're because these guns are getting more usual. and more and more and more expensive. Mm-hmm. And it's like all these people are buying like these, quote, semi-custom guns. They're, yes. well, they're, quote, full custom from these semi-custom shops. And uh-huh. everybody's yeah. spending – they're now all three and $4,000. And it's yep. like, you know, they think they're going to hold their value, and they're not because you can't you can't sell them um, for that kind of money. Well, did you know Wilson Combat has come out, and they're now doing Glock work? <laughs> Wilson – like 1911, Bill Wilson's company, you can send them a Glock – and they will, just like all these other companies. I think they've been. I think they've been doing that for a while, though. For oh, maybe they have. It's first. Well, I've heard of it. well, you know what? I don't know if they've been doing it for the civilian market. I know they've been doing it for law enforcement because, uh, like, they, they they were making Glock barrels. Well, because I know uh, I know you can like um, send them a like a. Uh, uh, Remington 870 and Wilson will do their their magic on it. Well, I yeah, know because they bought scat the uh, Wilson bought Scattergun Technologies a number of years ago. Yeah, they've they've been doing yeah. that for a long time. So, but I but I think Wilson's been been playing with like Glocks and stuff for a while for the law enforcement uh, community. Maybe. Um, I mean, I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure I know Wilson's been doing stuff like that. You so. can now you can literally send a Glock to Wilson Combat and get like a buy a package. I don't mm-hmm. I don't know how I don't know how deep it's going. Like if they're making parts or their own triggers or, or, or what. I, I don't. But, I honestly don't know why you would even want to waste your time or money. Well, dude, on something I know, but like, like that. Zev, Zev's the one that comes to mind. Then there's. Who's the other one? I think they're both in California. They do the, they do the, they 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 do the the custom high end Glock Glock. I mean, you can literally you'll see these guns for sale, and you can have three thousand uh-huh. dollars into a Glock. Dude, you can have three thousand dollars into the upper. Like it's, <laughs> you know, who's there, the, who's a, the other, a, is it is it, it Alk? Not, who is it? Z? Who's the other one that does it? I don't know because uh, I don't follow the Glock shit much. I don't but, either. Uh, but there's but, the thing. Um, Wilson's but, obviously but, decided they're like, hey, we're going to get in on some of this money. Yeah, well, I mean, why not? Because, you know, because Glock fanboys are crazy. I just, you know, just. just no, I mean, seriously, Glock, Glock. Look, there's not a whole lot you can do to a Glock. Glock is a freaking pizza box with trigger on it. Okay? So the only thing you can do is spend a lot of money on stupid accessories. I just well, I would just be real careful because I've seen a lot of Glocks. You know, people they they throw all this stuff into these Glocks, and you know, either you don't have the experience or the uh, skill level to master whatever it is you've had done to your Glock, and you're just trying to compensate. I need a better trigger, or you um, or, or you've made a gun that when you go to actually run it hard, you decide you're going to go to your one. Gun school mecha class and it shits the bed. I, I, dude, I, yeah. I, I, oh my god. Look, if 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 I had a Glock, there's only there's only two things I would do to it. I would put a threaded barrel on it and I would change the sights to accommodate a cam. And that's it. 
you're just making a suppressor host, yeah, so that's fine. Yeah, exactly, because the truth is your standard out-of-the-box Glock is a fine gun. Yeah. And again, it's hard for me to say that because I hate Glocks so bad. But, look, the truth is I defer people to Glocks all the time, and I've said this in the past. You know, uh, uh, you know, for a guy that just wants a gun that comes right out of the box that, you know, whether he shoots a uh a box of ammo a year or thousands of rounds a year. He wants a good, reliable handgun that's going to work, whether it be just for taking it to the range and shooting or plinking in the backyard or carrying it for self-defense. There's not a damn thing wrong with a Glock. It's a fine weapon, and it's proved, it's time and, you know, it's a proven platform. I personally don't like them, but I recommend them to people all the time They're because they're good guns. I'll tell you what, but, I, I, um, I had a – I knew a judge – who was on the bench for a long, 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 long time. And at one point he asked me, he goes, Hey, you know, he, and he kept a, he kept a, uh, he kept a handgun in his, uh, it, it like literally in his chambers and he, and he would bring it out some, and, uh, he, he, I, I, you know what? I'm going to back off this. He kept a handgun somewhere in his courtroom. And so, and he had had this gun and he was like, Oh, you know, can you check this gun out? Is it, is it okay? Is it still work? And it was a thirty-eight special J frame gun that he literally I don't think he'd picked it up in sight and, and rotated the cylinder in twenty years. Huh. And the thing is, I expect it 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 worked. I we the ammo did work eventually, but he was like he was like, Well, you know, I think maybe I should get like a newer gun with more bullets because, like, you know, stuff's been happening, and you know, there's been like you know big gunfights at courthouses. And he was like, "What do you think I should get?" I was like, "Glock, nineteen or seventeen. Yeah. I recommended a nineteen because it's not that big, but it's got sixteen bullets in it. And here's the thing: you can take a Glock with sixteen bullets, you can put it into a drawer, and twenty years later, you pull it out, that gun's gonna work. Yep, like a revolver, because it's yep. also partly double action. Yeah. I uh, know. I mean, you know, it's um. So anyway, uh, anyway but the, the I kind of we kind of got sidetracked. The new Gen Five Glocks. I'm going to get one today. Apparently, they have less pins in them than the Gen Fours. Like they started off with a certain pin, pin or pins, worked their way up to more pins, and now they've worked their way back down to a single pin. And part of me's like, I wonder <clears> if they're even going to make the Gen Five in, like, because. 40 and 45 and 357 sig because i think part of the reason why they had to upgrade the glocks with more pins is these bigger these you know these these higher pressure rounds were were breaking these guns and i wonder if maybe they're not going to maybe they'll keep the gen fours and do the gen five and nine millimeter only uh, yeah i don't care i know uh i mean the gen gen five is just like whatever I know. I mean, I, I think the whole Gen Five things fail. <laughs> what I mean, you yeah, know, whatever. You know, it's just it's so it's so Glock can have can have a new skew. So every, everyone yeah. that's got everyone that's a Glock fanboy has to go out and buy another Glock. Yeah, and whatever. You yeah. know what? You you see a Glock in a box and, and it's it's a good price. Just buy it. it doesn't matter what Gen it is. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Um, I didn't tell you this story. So we're working on. Yeah, we haven't discussed this. We haven't discussed it actually even here. I mean, we're debating. We are debating doing one of those Taiwanese Republic of China T91, you know, wolf upper things. Yeah. And so. Yeah, I saw I, your message last night on it, and I wasn't uh, I, I wasn't happy with that. Um, well, the, this is uh, mm. this is even better. So I haven't told you this one. So the people, okay. So look, we're trying to get a lower with the correct Chinese markings. I come Chinese, Taiwanese, Republic of China, as opposed to PRC, People's Republic of China. Whatever. Uh, whatever. So you know, but there's you know we have people that listen because of all the, all the other stuff. So anyway, <laughs> they uh, the, you can get eighty percent lowers. Quote eighty percent again, air quotes. So again. All I did is the people that are selling this 80% lower, so it's not a firearm. All I did is I said, hey, because, you know, I sent you the the quote we got from the FFL to go ahead and finish this thing out, 
put the trigger in it, parkerize it, and the yeah. prices, and we were like, oh, yeah, that's not a good price at all. So I was like, hey, I'm sure these guys who sell these lowers or these, quote, 80%, 80 percent hunks of metal that look kind of like ARs, but they're not firearms. I said, "Hey, do you guys have any any anybody you can recommend that can finish out this lower for me?" And I even said, and I and I even said, I said, and I made it clear. I said, "Yes, I understand that it would have to be serialized." And be forty four seventy three back to me. That's kind of how I worded it. Yeah. And this guy has gone bonkers bullshit on me, and he's talking like you have to build this gun yourself, and you can't sell this gun. And all of a sudden, he's talking about he's a he's talking about the quote unquote ghost gun thing. Oh my! Oh my! That's God. bullshit. You can serial. Oh, never mind. I, I know. I, no, I know. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. It's again. He's not because he's fucking retarded. And it's like, I said, dude, you're misunderstanding. All I asked was, um, I just, uh, you know, I'm looking for a, an 07 or SOT that can turn this into a receiver for me. So it's in spec. Cause, you know, we want to try to build a quality build here. And yeah. this guy is just, I, I don't even know if he's going to sell us the part. Well, then you know what? Move on. I don't care. I know, but it's just like this guy uh -huh. is just – I'm trying to explain. It's like, dude, I'm not – I'm like, dude, yes, you have a gutter pipe right now. I want to – instead of me you know, taking a goddamn drill press and trying to finish this thing out myself and having it be off because I still got to send it out to be parkerized anyway, go ahead. I just figured you'll – because I know there's guys that are doing – um uh, who are doing these T91 builds. Well, okay, let me ask you this. <clears throat> Can't we have... I, I'm going to just say Anderson, for example, because they're local to us. Okay? Can't we... They build receivers all the time. Can't we get a hold of someone like Anderson and say... Put these markings on it? Put these markings on it for us. Because that's all they're doing. I mean, these aren't real receivers. You know, they're just building them and putting the markings on them. It's just like, you know, uh, here's here's the markings we want on this receiver. I would bet and, Anderson. I don't. Here's the thing. They might finish out the the piece. Again, I don't have a relationship with Anderson. I don't know. You know more about them than I do. No, no. But what I'm saying is, is not even buying the eighty percent from this guy. Just having Anderson just put the put the 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 Taiwanese markings on one of their receivers. You know what? I what I well, guess the point I'm trying to make is, I suspect you're getting into the McDonald's or Burger King problem. That's like going because again, these are manufacturing companies that do high volume, and I would expect. <laughs> Doing a custom order like that, it's like ordering a cheeseburger, you're ordering a hamburger with no cheese on it at McDonald's. Is you're going to end up with a fucking chicken sandwich, because <laughs> you know, because you know what I'm saying. I mean, just yeah. if you if you just you're just going to it's just going to get screwed up. And I don't know, maybe Nodak Spud. I just this this conversation with this guy, you can just tell this guy's a moron. And you know, again, maybe he's paranoid because maybe he doesn't have an FFL. I mean, I just assumed. I don't know what. Well, the, he, they got these. Well, he's, he's probably a guy with a CNC machine, and he doesn't have an FFL, and he's cranking out eighty uh, percent lowers because you know he can. I actually, because I actually found him through a guy that's on the internet. He's in California, and he's a pretty big machine gun guy, buddy of Larry Vickers. And I was like, "Where'd you get that lower?" And he was like, "This dude." I was like, "Awesome!" Reached out to that dude, and. This has turned into a fucking clown show, and it's just like it's going to come to a head today when I, you know, when I finally deal with him. Because I just, I just think this guy is, you know, I'm, we may not, we may not get that Taiwanese lower, or it's, it's again, it's not even a lower, it's a, it's a piece of metal, it's not even a yeah. firearm, it's got yeah, fake Taiwanese yeah. markings on it and a fake Taiwanese serial number on it. Yeah, so you know, the the truth is at this point in time, I don't even really care. Um, seriously, um, you know, if he, look, I know, I know what I can buy a complete 100% lower for. 
Um, you know, his price is not that great. I mean, the only reason he's getting the price he's getting on this 80%, and it's not like he's asking a whole hell of a lot of money, but he's asking a lot more than what it's worth is because of the markings, because people want to build these um, T91s. And that's fine. He's got his little niche, and he's making his money, and that's great. But, you know, again, it goes back to uh, don't make it hard for me to give you money. And again, I just, I don't, I, I had a hard time under believing that he, you know, again, he's got these non firearm lowers that are not functional firearms with these markings. He's made them for people to do builds. And I just have a hard time believing that he hasn't had somebody go, Hey, man, do you have a, do you have a, you know, first I said, do you, if I paid you, could you guys finish this out for me? Cause I, I didn't know if the guy had an FFL or not, if he was an, if he was a manufacturer or not, as opposed yeah. to a gun store or, or what he is. And if you don't, is there another manufacturer that the hundred people that have come in front of me and bought this thing have sent this to to get it finished? Cause I know for a fact that the guy in California, who's the machine gun guy, couldn't turn a goddamn screw with a fucking screwdriver. He had somebody <laughs> make that goddamn thing for him. And it's just like, yeah. this is tr just a simple question has turned into a complete fucking shit show. Okay, this wraps up episode 74 of the John 1911 podcast. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please check out our blog page, john1911.com. And just remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good day. See you later.